Each time I speak, I am being misunderstood. But listen, if our leaders will not be careful and do what they should do to put Nigeria in a good platform, one day, this country will collapse. If they don't do what they should do, and the youths keep suffering, and the jobs are not provided, and the leaders are busy amassing wealth, keeping money for themselves, and these teeming millions of Nigerian youths are watching them. A time is coming when what we are experiencing now will just be biscuits. The generation that is now are delivering children and their children are coming up very soon. Amen. Amen. By the time the children are grown, hello? Ah. By the time the children are grown up, they may not tolerate this nonsense. Because there is no country in the world that is as blessed as Nigeria. Yet, our leaders are not ready to use our resources well to take care of the children in this country. Suffering has become part of our history. But it will not continue like this forever. And everybody cannot be dumb at the same time. Our suffering is unnecessary. There is no reason why Nigerians should be suffering what you are suffering now. Apart from the wickedness emanating from the quarters of leadership. There was no kidnapping in Nigeria. There was no banditry in Nigeria. There was no terrorism. Hooliganism was at a mere, a miniature level. I knew when we were growing up, you can hardly hear that somebody stole something. At that time, leadership was not to make money. There is no reason why this kind of trouble will be in a country that is blessed by God in this nature. Why? I am seeing a time if my brother priests and the whole men of God will not rise up and begin to speak. If we are not careful to do what we, what we should do as prophets and men of God. A time comes when we will be hearing that Bishop A, B, C, D is arrested and handcuffed and priests will not talk. That time is coming. When the children of God will lose faith in their men of God. When, when you tell them the Lord be with you, they say, forget it. That time is coming. When, if we cannot speak for them now, they will not speak for us. That time is coming. 
when offering baskets are going to suffer hunger. Because children of God might have lost confidence in their men of God and women of God. Because the church should be a solution center, a salvific zone. Not just a place where we take your money and we don't care about how you feel. That time is coming. If the men of God will not rise up and speak consistently for our youth, as I said, what we are experiencing now will be just a little or nothing. Many years ago, I was telling them. Somebody came and said his motorcycle was stolen. And the Lord told me, tell them, a time is coming when not just motorcycle, people, men will be stolen. And if you bring money, it will be released. Kidnapping, many years ago. By that time, there was nothing like kidnapping in this uh, country. What is happening now? So all those who are busy preparing for 2023 thinking that it is a messianic time for them political messianic time for them to continue to launder, launder wealth and money that belongs to the poor money that should be used to develop the city and the youth will be fully engaged in one business or the other doing one job or the other because an idle hand is a devil's workshop. What are we expecting when 99% of our youth are jobless? What are we expecting? What things are going to happen? If anybody is telling you it's going to end today or tomorrow, that person is a liar. That person is not a man of God. Even if they arrest everybody, it will not end it. The solution is not in the arrest. The solution is in the job provision. One of these days, what did they do in the book of Jeremiah chapter 38? They went and arrested Jeremiah. Handcuffed him and put him inside the pit. Put him inside the pit. Jeremiah was inside the pit. And the leader shouted, Go and release Jeremiah in verse 12, down to verse 14. Jeremiah was inside the pit, mirroring at the door. After the rebel called him, he was in the pit, and he was in the pit. I Jeremiah. I pity Jeremiah. Amen. Nimo Nunebono, and you know that's the other put here. Thirty men should go and raise and leave Jeremiah out. Amen and amen. Thirty men went. And we're to have a rag. Now we are rag, Nimo Nuno. And now we are rags. Aqua Doctor and now we are Nime. And now we own no. Now we any more no. Then Jeremiah was out to put the rags under his armpit. Where were rags? It's an armpit. Amen. As in what's it on it? Armpit. Thirty men. I don't know how many there were that put him inside the pit. But the Bible says, 30 men were commanded to bring him out. Hello? <laughs> Jeremiah was pulled up. Oshebe. Oshebe. Until he came out. Jeremiah came out of the pit. Maybe your heart is inside the pit. Maybe your hope is inside the pit. 
a time has come for somebody that is in the pit, somebody that is in a bondage, to be pulled out. Amen and amen. amen. Check one again, altar. May I come up with it? Think w with me. All the people who have one business or the other. Do they have time for rubbish? Each time I speak about job provision, they begin to blackmail me and accuse me so that the truth will not emerge. They begin to talk about the They are wasting their time oh, because I am on a mission on earth to defend those who cannot be defended. I should be the hand for those who have no hands, be the leg for those who have no legs, and be the voice for those who are voiceless. Even if I want to keep quiet, I cannot. I know the Holy Spirit is using me. I cannot. Therefore, I give it to our leaders once more. Let them do what they should do. Because when the major catastrophe will happen in the future, they will not be exempted. If they like, let them jail everybody. Let them put everybody handcuff. That is not the solution. Let them feel the pains in the lives of the timid Nigerians. Go to the outside land and see how people are suffering. But you feel a billionaires in dollars. What are they doing with those dollars? Billionaires. Go to Lagos in Yoruba land. You experience multi-billion dollar people. Yet, many Yoruba people are still in a pauperous level. Go to what TV? Benue areas. And the banditry and kidnapping has become a business. At times, you will pay the ransom, they will still kill the people, the person. Come down to Ibo land here. Here becomes a hub, a zone for suffering. It doesn't mean that Nigeria is not blessed. If all the monies they are packing for election 2023 are released and they are used to build industries, all the monies that are being used to procure ammunition to be shooting and killing victims, whom they call victims, bandits, and now we have a Gurundi police in the army. Are you fighting with who? Use the money and create jobs. Kidnapping will vanish. Banditry will end. Terrorism will be a thing of the past. Who is fooling who? Oh! God says, when we are afflicted, he was also afflicted. Go say me to tie, go say me to tie. If you talk, they will arrest you. They will invite you. You will be in trouble. Intimidation will not solve it. Because when you beat somebody, the person must cry. It doesn't take them anything if they love this land. That's why I'm saying that the real people that should be in the prison are the people who are busy arresting others and putting them in prison. I know that after this message, they will invite me again.
Amen and amen. They are gradually succeeding in their gimmicks and their schemes to make sure that men of God are silent. And once they have succeeded, Psalm 11 3 says, Foundation once destroyed, what will the just man do? Look at our medical experts, hot brains graduating from medical schools. Where do they work? Which hospital have facilities? What is happening? What does the facilities cost? And when they are sick, they will fly out. And when we are sick, we are expected to die here. Who is fooling who? Arrest is not the solution. There is agitation in the land. Let the leaders listen. Let them listen. Their stubbornness one day will collapse this country. It's not a matter of referendum. The Israelites did not do any referendum in the land of Egypt. Who is fooling who? You don't call a good dog a bad name to kill it. People have senses. Everything is not just a power and money. There is still God. And for my beloved Nigerians and to you, beloved children of God, as far as God is still alive, the Bible says in Ezra chapter 10 verse 2, in spite of all this, there is still hope. Let them do their worst. God will do his best. They will do their worst against us. God will do his best to us. The amount of money used to buy ammunition to fight fellow Nigerians. Money used to arrest and imprison. Any country that is maintaining army and police can never prosper economically. And remember, the policemen and the military men, are they even enjoying their lives? Are they enjoying anything in this country? Therefore, I pray that whatever be the name of the demon that is now eating deep into this country, that demon should be bound and chained in Jesus' name. Demon of wickedness. They don't care. They don't care. You are a leader today. Can you tell me when you are going to die? Many countries that have no oil are doing very well. We have all it takes to do better. I am Miri Nabamuchuku. Many people cannot afford their three meals a day. Three meals with two, two. Some who are on drugs cannot eat to take their medication. Because justice is denied. Truth is buried. Love is nowhere to be found. We men of God are now more interested in how to take care of ourselves. The new cars we buy. The new jets we fly. Competition with mundane things. Instead of competing with souls. Salvation. Instead of competing among ourselves with righteousness, holiness, humility, and the fear of God. By the time the anger of God falls, there will be in trouble. There will be trouble in the country. There will be trouble in the country. By that time, the leaders will be looking for those to complain to. We just pray that the Lord who lifts up will not abandon us. So wherever you are, I want you to look unto God. Our God 
is the source of our redemption. He is our hope. In him we trust. He will not fail us. And this dark time will not continue forever. One day, something will happen. It will come from heaven. But it will appear satanic. It will be a big trouble. And the people will now sit up. Why should our leaders continue to rejoice? Because they, their subjects are suffering. Let us do proper censusing. How many are employed and how many are idle? That is the reason for the agitation. Police in army, I need a check, a good star and orange check. Bullet when I convoy. Nature and during chair. We will, 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 we Live and let live. So, after all these millions of people have come out from the school, they will just be watching and waiting for who? A hunger time is coming in the future and the agitation will be uncontrollable. Let them go and buy millions of handcuffs. Because in the coming future, many outside people will say, we can't manage your people. The Yoruba people will say, we can't manage your people. The Niger Delta will say, we can't manage your people. The TV people will say, we can't manage your people. Canaba people, Efik, will say, not at all, never again. And the Igbo people will say, I therefore prophesy to our leaders to sit up and remember they will die one day. God gave them this opportunity for leadership to take care of the poor masses. It is, should not be an opportunity for them to amass wealth to the detriment of our children. Live and let live. Otherwise, they will suffer. How? I don't know. There are many who are now clapping for them. By the time, the heat will be too much from the sky. That is the height of it. A country where prophets are dumb, then the church is dead. When prophets are dumb, the death of the church is imminent. So, men of God, it's not a title you have as a priest. It is just an honor from heaven. We should use this to salvage our people. Salus and Imarum is the beginning of the canon law and the end of canon law. The sense of our call is unto Salus and Imarum to save souls. Even the worst sinner should be saved. But nowadays in Nigeria, if you call anybody's name, they will assess whether the person is a sinner or a saint. So only the saint's name should be called. When Jesus says he has come for the sinners, 
not for the so-called righteous. As for all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If we succeed in having priests and the pastors who cannot talk anymore, who will just celebrate the mass and go to their rooms after taking breakfast, they eat their lunch and take siesta and they come out and live their normal ordinary lives, okay? And they take their supper and they sleep. We forgot that those who are donating the money for this breakfast, supper, and lunch, those who are maintaining our vehicles, those who are making sure that our generators are on, even when they don't have a lantern in their houses, even when they have lanterns, no kerosene to put it on, that they are suffering. That time is coming. And the men of God will suffer. Men of God will suffer. I say time is coming. When men of God in Nigeria will suffer. To say the truth is not political. Things are not well. People are suffering. People are suffering. People are crying. It's not just the Igbo youths. The whole Nigerian youths are not happy with our leaders. I, for one, as a man of God, I stand out to decree and I affirm it that I am not happy the way things are going in this country. They want to politicize the pulpit. If you take money from any politician, it's the money if you want. But allow men of God to speak out. You cannot merchandise the altar power. Who are you? God is in heaven watching the affairs of men on earth. When will this idiocy end? Is this the manner of the church? Is it the pattern of the church that produced saints in the days of old? What is happening? Our children are suffering. Men of God, if we keep keeping silent, time is coming when the key funders, because men of God now are looking for funders. Funders, those who will bring money. If you can bring money, then you are a, a, a good church member. If you cannot bring money, nobody handles your case. If you are sick, nobody visits you. But let there be one call from one senator, one rich man, one, oh. Men of God will drop whatever they are doing in a rush. Are we now serving God or money? Project A, project B, project C. Will projects ever end? The highest project given to us is the project of soul saving. If we cannot save souls, our business as men of God have failed. That is why Nigeria is suffering now. Not just our political leaders. We men of God, we have gone corrupt. We have eaten the dish of the devil. We have started romancing with dirty politicians. And they have moved money and caged and merchandised prophetic unctions. At that stage, time is coming where many children of God will be arrested. And men of God will just pray for your soul when you die. Where is the fact of Salus and Emaru? When our people are jobless and we cannot talk, yet we need the money from the people who are jobless. What type of Christianity is that? Who is fooling who? You are free to hate me or love me. That one is your business. I am operating in the love of God and the Holy Ghost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Please, my dear ones, don't lose hope in God. No matter what is happening, 
Even if you lose hope in the man of God, don't lose hope in God. If God asks you to say something, man of God, be free to say it. Otherwise, you will die with the truth inside you. All these momentary afflictions will add to heavy weight of eternal glory. Therefore, as the 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, we let us stand firm to defend the souls given to us. If they are living, let us live with them. If they are dying, let us die with them. That is to be a pastor. Otherwise, why are we running to become priests? And be ordained. And become shepherds. No. Solution. Evolution. Is what I'm talking about. As I said, even if they put handcuffs on 100 Nigerians, it will not stop. It will even hike the agitation. You cannot count people down when they cannot eat. School fees on any good school is on a high level. And the parents, after suffering to train their children, these children will be at home. You can borrow money from the bank for any business without paying huge interest. Whereby if you put money in the bank, the profit will be so minimal. Who is fooling who? In a country where we are told that the dollar, one dollar is 500 and something naira now. But there are people who are buying and selling the dollar at a reduced rate in the same country. Who is fooling who? The agitation will not stop because some people are handcuffed. It will increase it. So I ask the leaders to sit down and not sell their paper. Don't sell your sons because you are governors today. Don't sell your sons and daughters because of a political promise you may not know the outcome of it in the future. Because one night God decided that these tears of the Israelites will end. That midnight, Exodus chapter 12. Even the money and the wealth and gold they never gave to the, to the Israelites, they were forced to provide it. Because one angel passed by. Remember Exodus 12, 7. That the lintel of the house shall be tainted with the blood. Verse 13 says, when I see the blood, Passover. When that angel of Passover passed by, oh Jesus, the whole men of God were inside the room with the Holy Israelites celebrating their Passover. Every man of God that will hear this voice, you better not misunderstand me. Because whether it will come through, it will. It's a matter of time. What you should do is gather your own paper. If you have lacked the unction to speak the truth, let the lay people lay hands on you and rekindle the unction for prophetic audacity. If you cannot speak, allow those who have the unction to speak. There are varieties of gifts. We cannot be alike. No, never. All are not gifted alike. Some have gifts of healing. Others are gifts of miracle. Others are gifts of deliverances. Others are gifts of preaching. Some have gifts of signs and wonders. Some have oh, a lot of gifts. Some see gifts of singing. Some gifts of still worship. Just develop your own gift. And stop trying to measure everybody alike. It can never happen. If you try to do it, you will die in the process. All are not gifted alike. That is why Nigeria is suffering now. Because we men of God have started attacking each other. If Mbaka preaches that just be created, others will rise up and begin to fight for Mbaka. As if to say, I have biological children to be employed. As if to say, I don't know how many People in this east of Niger to the glory of God that has employing opportunity more than me. The person is yet to come. 
whether you like it or not. Employment for evangelical purposes. And I've told God, instead of buying a jet, I will use the money to take care of widows and orphans. I better trek walking on the road than using money to buy an expensive vehicle. No. Even the ones I use now are gifts given to me. So what are you talking about? Are we going to die with any spoke of any bicycle? We come here empty-handed. We should go empty-handed. We are moving to heaven. Let our joy be souls saved, lives saved and blessed. If you don't have the unction, gather around those who have it. Because there is no time. So I lift my hands up with you. Because that angel will pass again. And the catastrophe started happening in the land of Egypt. All the firstborns, none survived it. The same Pharaoh that was punishing the Israelites, putting handcuffs on them, the same Pharaoh said, go and bring Moses. Moses said, no. <laughs> you said, I will not see your face. And I said, I will not even see it again. Rather, we shall not go empty-handed. Settle us. Say, go carry your people and go. Say, no. We cannot go empty-handed. Settle us. Children of God, in this country, as Nigeria is well-blessed. This country is well-blessed. Fellow Nigerians will not go empty-handed. There is a level of blessing that can come if there is orderliness in the country. We don't even need offering money. Because everybody will be so much blessed. You'll be playing on good roads. These things are not achievements. It's like a priest. After this, I give you Holy Communion. Is it an achievement that I give you Holy Communion after Mass? It's my duty. And it is your right. Good roads. Good roads are your rights. Constant power supply should be your right. Good water supply should be your right. Quality hospital should be your right. Quality education should be your right. And job provision should be your right. Even security. It should not be all just leaders carrying security among themselves. Wait, 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 wait. If they have policemen keeping them, each and every one of us should have policemen keeping us. It is your right. One day they will quote me. There's no level of harassment that will merchandise the truth. People are not happy. Let them not invest much in arresting people and handcuffing people. Let them invest much in providing jobs. Let them spend time releasing the monies, the part here and there. If the amount of energy they use to arrest and shoot people, they will use it to release the monies they packed for 2023 election. Everybody in this country will have a job. And once you have a job, A has a job, B has a job, to X, Y, Z. Nobody will have time for banditry. And at that time, I want to assure you that God's salvific power will emerge. Those who are already in the grave, caged and bound, like Jesus. In Matthew 28, he was in the grave, bound. By then he was dead. Dead. He was a dead man. The Bible says in verse 1, there was earthquake over the whole world. Earthquake. And I'm over, G -g -g -g. and the angel of God came and sat upon the stone. And the Bible said, and he rose. He was lifted up. That is how you too will be lifted up. That is how we shall be lifted up. In Mark chapter 16, the Bible says in verse 6, he is no longer here. He has risen. I want to hear one day that you have risen. We have risen. Our country has risen. Men of God, that your ministry and our ministries are risen. We cannot be cowed down forever. We shall obey God rather than 
man. So I lift up my hands with yours. Praying for God. I'm praying to the same God. For God to answer us. And to God who answered prayers. Yes, I am better. In anywhere you are downtrodden. In anywhere you are bound and caged. In anywhere you are put inside the pit. We are going to hear the news like a dream. That you have been lifted up. Abasaram chineke akani isigi. Ebemba dolo ukuni ike chineke nebu nienu. And the Bible says in Act 2, 24, death cannot hold him captive. Whatever is holding us captive, men of God, let us emerge from it. In Europe, there were moments when Christianity was reigning everywhere. This kind of thing that is happening in Nigeria started happening. And men of God failed in their duties. And now, you can come to a big church like our cathedral. And you see about 20 people. And all old, aged people. In America, last time I went for a crusade, New York had, I think, two churches, big churches to sell. Nobody comes there again. Nobody. Nobody does the sign of the cross anymore. There. And the church of St. Antoninus, in Newark, where I did ministration. That one was almost at the verge of being sold. And I was invited for that crusade for revival. They didn't have money anymore to maintain the church. Because nobody comes to church. Only few people. Because there was a time the church used to be filled up and they built big churches. Now we are busy building big, big churches. And we are not building big, big anointing and big souls. We are not building righteousness. We are not defending the church members in a time of crisis. If we are not careful, what happened in Europe may happen in Nigeria. One of the churches in New York was bought by Muslims. A big church turned into a mosque. If we know all these histories, why should we not allow our priests to exercise their priestly, kingly, and prophetic unctions? That time may come. Inside that church of St. Antoninus, I conducted fundraising. I, who went there, there should even be planning on how to raise funds for me. But I was the first to raise fund. I donated first. No money to hit the church anymore. One of the churches sold in New York, a big church, was bought by a musician. Those who have been traveling abroad know these stories. Why do we hide it and feel as if to say nothing is happening? Because we are controlling the church members as if to say they are robots. Chairs. Pawns in the chess play. That time may come if we are not careful. Let us not allow the church members to find solutions elsewhere. We should protect our people. Lord, for them back, I will hate him. I'm not serving you. I'm serving the most high God. You hate me makes nothing. Changes nothing. Once God loves me. It's better you hate me and God loves me than that you love me and God hates me. What am I doing with your stupid and idiotic love? Is that in love? Instead of remaining a becoming a psychophant. Instead of becoming a psychophant, I should better stop being a priest. But if I must remain under this priestly, kingly and prophetic life and unction, we'll be tied who will try to stop what God has started. God will start what he has started and stop that person.
Agitation is in the country. People are hungry. People are jobless. People are not secured. People are sick and there's no good hospital to go to. There is no money in their purses. But we have our leaders carrying about billions and billions and billions. You think the youth will keep watching you because you have handcuffed. And whoever thinks you handcuff the person, you are wasting your time. Therefore, as we lift our hands, I bless whoever is already bondaged spiritually. I pray for your release in Jesus' name. We lift our hands and pray for the church and the church members and church leaders that the Lord will renew his prophetic audacity, priestly audacity, and kingly unction in the name of Jesus. I pray for upliftment. When we were suffering, he was suffering. And he sent his angel of his presence to save us. And what did the angel do? He lifted us up. Yeah. Ministering from Isaiah 3 verse 9. I lift my hand upon you. And I bless somebody. As the Bible takes me to. The book of Luke. Gospel of Luke chapter 7. It is the case of the daughter of Nain. A woman, a widow who had an only son. After Jesus has done a miracle. In the house of the centurion. Remember the centurion called Jesus to come and save the child, before, the servant before the servant dies. That's what I'm with him. Jesus, but I said, no, no, I don't mean that you come to my house. In verse 7, he said, only say the word and my servant shall be healed. Because I am a king like you. I command one to go and he goes. Just like the kings in this country. If they want these sufferings to end, they will end it. Selflessness, we end this. But one, there's a goodism and selfish life. You want to become this, you want to become that, you want to become that. At the end, what happens? How many houses are, going, are you going to carry to the grave? Ah, <laughs> yes, one Nigerian flag upon a casket. And by the time the Casket is going to be laid down. They will remove the flag. The flag will be upon the casket after all the salute. By the time the casket is to be laid down, they remove the flag. That is all you have. Why can't we now repent and seek the face of God? Why are people enjoying the sufferings of their members? Here, name and will be. By the time I'm finishing this, they will carry money to some men of God. Are you silent? Why should you allow for Ambaka to be talking like this? As if to say, anybody is the owner of this mouth apart from the Holy Spirit. Why are they enjoying our suffering? If we in Korobia, who with energy, he can do whatever, three jobs. What do they do in abroad? One job, two jobs, three jobs. And at the going up on there's too, there's no too much money over there, but too much jobs. Job A, job B, job C. Even during winter, they do dirty jobs. Go to what during the snow moment, Nigerians suffer to make money. Our people suffer. Which, if our leaders could help us to build a better Nigeria, many of them will come home. God, there's no winter here, there's no earthquake here, there's no need for what we are suffering. Our sufferings are man made, man made. Praise the living God.